So I recently had a go at using this Gunson's gas tester to check the idle CO content um, of the exhaust, the 1972 Mercedes 350 SL. Paid about £130 um, for it off eBay. Has slightly mixed reviews. If you look online, a lot of people said it was quite fragile but fiddly to use, weren't really sure how accurate it is. Having used it myself, I would agree with those comments. Uh, for example, this module on the back came unstuck and had to Velcro it back on. Didn't actually seem to affect the performance of the unit, but a lot of the, the sort of pipe work and the casing, it's all quite sort of plasticky. However, it's the only tool in that sort of price range that I could find. Obviously the units that you find in an MOT station, hundreds if not thousands of pounds more. Gunson promised an accuracy on this of 0.5% plus minus 0.5%. So it's not really accurate enough to test for emissions on a modern car where the tolerances are, you know, 0.1 or possibly even 0.01. However, on an older car like Mercedes, manufacturer's tolerance is 0.5 to 2. So that's probably accurate enough uh, for, for this. Now, I should just add that this is primarily a video about using the Gunson. It's not a video about how to tune your DJ Tronic Mercedes. Uh, you'll see me twisting the mixture knob on the ECU uh, later on in the video. However, the car in question has a number of running issues and I'm not, I don't want uh, to suggest that I'm an expert in, in tuning D-Victronic, I'm not. I just wanted to adjust the ECU and see whether this gave me a credible reading such that after I've addressed other issues with the car, I can come back and use this again and check that it's approximately within spec. So the first step is to assemble uh, the pipe work on the back. Uh, there's no other assembly required. The unit just comes like this, as I said earlier, that is stuck to the back of the unit, but it's not stuck very well. So I just use a bit of Velcro to stick that back on. But yeah, all these pipes, that's just the main probe that goes in the exhaust, goes into the back of this plastic circle here. And then you've got this pipe here. Then you've got an open pipe on the back. Once you've assembled all that, you hook it up to 12 volt battery. You can hook it up to the car's battery, but I would recommend using a separate battery just to give it a bit of extra flexibility. And then Gunson want you to wait for eight minutes just with the probe in the, just in free air. And that figure should stabilize at around about 2%. So you leave it for eight minutes. I'd suggest at this point you start the car so you get a warm idle reading, assuming that's what you want. It's the case in most cars. And then when you come back after eight minutes, this figure should be reading approximately 2%. Uh, In my case, I think it was about 1.6. You then twiddle the knob on here to get it to that 2%. So 2% is the calibration point. You then leave it for a further two minutes before sticking it in the exhaust. Now, what I found is that even in that two minutes, this figure did wander very slightly, so I just twisted it back to two, left it for about 30 seconds, checked it was stable, and then stuck it in the exhaust. Obviously, if it's out by 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.1, whatever it is, when you stick it in the exhaust, it doesn't really matter because I'm talking about a ballpark figure that was 1.5% wide here. So it was still, still good enough in, in, in that regard. Very 
sensitive and near the knob. But anyway, that is two, so I'm now going to wait for another two minutes before putting it in the exhaust. So our two minutes is up. Um, the gauge is currently really 1.9 on the, on, the, on the machine, so I'm just going to twist it very gently back up to two to make sure that it's at two. And then we're going to put it in the, uh, in the exhaust. So you put it a uh, minimum of eight, eight inches or 20 centimeters, probably about to there. Let's see if I can get it in. So it wants us to wait for a minute after insertion. And that figure's been stable for at least 20 seconds now. So 5.96 even, that is very high. So I'm gonna try and just lean out the mixture on the ECU and see if that brings it down. So here we go. This is the only manually adjustable thing on the ECU. theory should be leaning the mixture. I'm not really sure what the calibration kind of here is, so let's go back and see what effect that might have had. Well we've got it, we're down to 2.8, so uh, let's give that a little bit more and see what happens. 1.9 so we're really in spec I'm just gonna give, open the air screw on, on the uh, uh, on the manifold slightly though just to uh, help the engine out Uh, the instructions say to remove the probe from the exhaust but leave it connected to the battery for another 10 minutes or so just to allow this figure here to return to the uh, two position or as close as possible like to you know between like one and three I'd suggest and that just helps it keep its calibration now at some point during the exercise when I used this for the first time I found that no matter how long I left it connected to the battery in just pre-air it wouldn't return to two I'd somehow got it out of the range of calibration and I basically I ran out of calibration on the knob now it's not in the instructions that come with it but I managed to find online some supplementary instructions that tell you what to do if that happens so this is obviously a known issue with the device and essentially there's a single screw underneath in the bottom there which you can undo uh, separate the body and then inside the circuit board there's some ad additional 
uh, calibration points that you can turn. So I carried that out and managed to return it to a point where I was getting two consistently on there and could calibrate it within you know a range using the external knob. And uh, for now that hasn't uh, it hasn't misbehaved again. But again, it just goes to show it's quite a fragile, fickle device. Uh, so you might have to do that if you're using it on a regular basis.